today's story, we're going to discuss what actually happened to the gold that was under the Dutchman's bed when he died. We know that Richard Holmes came in possession of 48 and a half pounds of the gold ore that was under the Dutchman's bed. And at some point, he went to Goldman's Mercantile on, on uh, Washington Street. And of course, uh, in order to make a deal, the gold had to be assayed. So the man they chose to do it was none other than Joe Porter Reed. Now we've discussed Joe a few times in other stories. Joe was born in France in 1855. He was educated in Paris, and he came to America when he was still a teenager. When he died at age 75, he had been in Arizona for about 50 years. He was well known. He had an impeccable reputation, and anybody that called himself a miner, just about anybody knew who he was, and they brought their ore to him to be assayed. Uh, Joe's assay office was located just west of Central Avenue between Jefferson and Washington Street at 24 Wall Street, which of course doesn't exist anymore. And right now, it's where Patriot Park is in Phoenix. Mr. Porter Ree was the chief assayer for the Vulture Mine over near Wickenburg. The Vulture Mine was established in 1863 and run well into the 1900s where it shut down once or twice, but it was shut down permanently in 1942. Uh, Mr. Porter Ree was also the chief assayer for the Mammoth Mine in Goldfield in the Superstition Mining District. So if anybody knew what the difference between the Dutchman's coal and any other gold that had been assayed, Mr. Porter Ree would know. The assay of the Dutchman's gold ore from under his bed assayed out at $110,000 per ton. Incredibly rich ore. Certain, certain select specimens run anywhere from 5,500 to 9,000 ounces per ton. Now you got to understand that this kind of gold, the Vulture Nine, for example, was the richest gold mine in Arizona. But Joe said himself that it was nothing like the Dutchman's gold. This, this Dutchman's ore was of such beauty, and, and it was so, well, more for the purpose of making jewelry than just melting it down. It would have been a crime just to melt it down for the gold itself. Rosenswig jewelry on um, Central Avenue, purchased some of this gold. I'm not sure if it was from Goldman's or from it was from Holmes himself, but they made a bunch of jewelry that nobody knows much about. Some of it went to Governor Hunt, and uh, some of it went to a guy named Jimmy Douglas, who was the manager of the Jerome Mines, north of Phoenix. Uh, Douglas also was involved in sinking a 500-foot shaft at the Vulture Mine. And Douglas, Arizona was named after him. And there was one other person, which I couldn't find much information about, uh, Mr. Hirschfield, who also had some of the Rosenzweig jewelry. Richard Holmes kept certain select pieces of jewelry-grade ore from the Dutchman's ore. And he had a, a ring, uh, a pair of cufflinks, a stick pin, and a stud made. And the matchbox uh, was made by a fellow named John Levy in San Francisco. Now all this jewelry stayed in the family. Uh, it was passed down to Richard's son, Brownie, and uh, it was stayed in the family till a short time before uh, Brownie passed away. He gifted the matchbox to a trusted friend and, and colleague who was his partner for 20 years in the search for the Lost Dutchman Mine. Many people claim that uh, Jacob Waltz high graded the ore from the Vulture Mine, but many historians have done research on that and there's absolutely no evidence that Jacob Waltz ever worked at the Vulture Mine. And of course, Mr. Porter Ree put to bed the rumor 
that the gold came from the vulture mine when he declared that the, the vulture mine had some very rich ore, but it was nothing like the Dutchman's. Others claim that the Dutchman's ore came from Goldfield in the Superstition Mining District out in Goldfield. Some, some actually think that it came from the Bulldog Mine. Of course, the Mammoth Mine was the richest mine out there, but there again, nothing like the Dutchman's ore. In fact, the owner of the matchbox went up to McKay School of Mining in Nevada with the matchbox and samples of ore from all the mines in the Goldfield mining area and the vulture mine as well and had a non-destructive test done on the matchbox against these other samples and it was declared that the Dutchman's ore was completely dissimilar to all the other ore. Several prominent geologists at the Department of Minerals and Resources in Arizona also studied the matchbox against some of these other ores, and they also declared that it was dissimilar from any other known mine in Arizona. In conclusion, the Dutchman's ore was real. Richard Holmes was real. The jewelry was real. The people we've been talking about are all real. So why is it that anybody thinks that the Dutchman gold mine doesn't exist? Now, I don't know where it's at, and I don't think anybody else does. Hundreds will tell you they know exactly where it is or they uh, have already found it, you know, but nobody's ever produced anything to be tested in a similar way as we just discussed. Thank you for watching this episode of Mysteries of the Superstition Mountains.